Good morning, good morning, Big Square, RoadToRuta.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. Um, today, there was a really interesting article from Gold Core uh, by Mark O'Byrne. I'm a big fan of Mark's. I, I loved him when I was only in silver. I love him when he's uh, he talks about a little bit of everything. He gets what's going on in silver manipulation, gold manipulation. Um, he doesn't quite get the cryptos. Um, but that's okay. Everybody will in due time. Uh, it's very clear to me and hopefully everybody who watches my videos is on the Road to Ruta email service. It's a free service. Go to RoadToRuta.com. Uh, you understand that we are in the middle of a transition from out of the old fiat system to a crypto back system. Uh, very important that this transaction happen, this transition happens. Because if the cryptos were not there, we would see massive deaths, literally. The old system would shut down. There'd be nowhere to go to. No gold and silver are not the answer. They can't be the answer. You have to train the whole world, every population, how to uh, value gold and silver. You have to re retrain people's mindset. Uh, it has already been drilled out of most everybody's head. Um, people don't see gold and silver as money other than gold bugs and silver bugs. So it will not be useful and helpful in any kind of uh, crash of the old system. And that's kind of where we get to in this article. Uh, Mark talks about Puerto Rico and their huge problems down there, gigantic problems. And the article is called Puerto Rico Without Electricity, Wi-Fi, ATMs Shows Importance of Cash, Gold, and Silver. I would say the importance of cash is absolutely necessary. Whatever people are familiar with in a... Um, that have in any society. Uh, I think in, with Puerto Rico's case, I think it's the importance that they should have been printing their own money. Um, that way they could distribute cash and they don't have to go begging to Donald Trump and the U.S. Congress. Um, but they, they are in deep trouble financially anyway. But now, obviously, these problems are exacerbated. Um, you know, they say they're running out of cash, but uh, probably cash to use because everybody was using electronic money. Um, and let's just go over a couple items that I agree with absolutely, and and then there's a couple assumptions he makes that I think are, are completely wrong. Uh, Puerto Rico, these are the bullet points. Puerto Rico without electricity, Wi-Fi, ATM shows the importance of cash, gold, and silver. I would say the importance of cash, yes. Nobody knows what gold and silver is still and why it is, or, or if it'll ever be money again. So I, I just put a little uh, feather in your cap on that one. Most of Puerto Rico remains in the dark and without power three weeks after the storm. Yes, and this can very easily happen all over the world. Um, Puerto Rico you know, was not exactly up to speed with everything anyway, um, but everything went down, uh, literally everything, and I can't believe they've even lasted three weeks. They probably wouldn't have lasted three weeks without all the help that's coming in from the U.S. and all around the world. Uh, with widespread power failures, Puerto Rico remains cash only with retailers accepting cash and few customers having cash. Shortages of food, fuel, and medicine with infrastructure repairs are delayed. Power could be out for months as 85% of the people remain off-grid. Around 75% of ATMs are disconnected. Electronic forms of payment, including Bitcoin, have been rendered non-viable. True. Uh, Puerto Rico's accidental cashless society shows risks of a cashless society and importance of holding cash, gold and silver, out of the financial and digital systems. Cash, gold and silver are not useful at all right now in Puerto Rico. They cannot be useful. Uh, in this, later on in this article, he talks about how people are going to uh, pawn shops and, and with uh, gold jewelry and silver coins and things like that. Well, if, if uh, Puerto Rico has no cash, then the pawn shops have no cash. Um, it's a very simple equation um, because you know you, things don't disappear. The cash doesn't disappear once you once you give it to you know pay for your uh, people running out of cash means they're they're spending their cash um, they're giving it to someone and then that person is probably hoarding it for their family or whatever they're hanging on to it and not it's not a, a constant flow um, but gold and silver. Uh, yeah, if you can find a gold and silver dealer who has the same mindset as you do, and he has cash at that moment, 
then I think that that would work. But the, on the same breath, if you find a Bitcoin lover or, or an Ethereum lover who has cash, you can do this exact same thing you're doing with gold and silver. But need, none of them, not gold, not silver, not cash is going to help the people in Puerto Rico. Uh, I mean, not gold, not silver, not Bitcoin will help the Peter, Puerto, people in Puerto Rico in the short term. It's just not viable. Now, I do think you should have gold and silver as for various reasons, but as long-term store of value and silver especially because it's absolutely necessary when things get up and running again. And things will get up and running again in Puerto Rico or they'll just move out of the country. They'll leave Puerto Rico and come to the United States somewhere where it's operating. Their banks will have, I think they have FDIC insurance down there. So the FDIC will pay what they can and then the rest will go to government and government will bail them out by printing more money. That's the way the game is played. Um, but to to say that the Puerto Ricans are are uh, surviving because of their gold and silver, I think, is a, a huge stretch. Um, and then you could throw Bitcoin right in there with it, truthfully. And yes, you do need uh, internet access and to to transact any business in banking these days. So yeah, you can't <laughs> without the internet, we're all screwed. Um, but that has to do with everything. You know, there will be no market for gold and silver either because the pawn shops wouldn't have any business. There's, there's no power. There's no, there's no nothing, um, without the internet because we live in a just in time delivery system, meaning nobody carries inventories. It's all just in time stuff. Yes. People will be happy to have gold and silver, but the, the fungibility of it, the, uh, use as money is not happening in Puerto Rico because everybody's forgotten. No, they're not going in with silver dimes to the grocery store to buy a week's worth of groceries. That's just not happening because people don't understand or, or people have forgotten. It's been drilled out of them that gold and silver are money other than the gold bugs. And maybe, you know, pawn dealers, they'll, they'll be very, they'll be picking up bargains. You'll be having to sell your silver for, you know, $5 on because cash is more valuable in that situation. Um, so yeah, and your Bitcoin will still be there if, you know, the power ever gets up and running again and the internet gets up and running, then your Bitcoin will be exactly where you left it. Um, no, I'm not saying the same for the banking system though. <laughs> That's for sure. Because this banking system is becoming extremely weak due to all these, uh, catastrophes. These, these are assets on the bank's balance sheet. And um, the pension funds, balance sheet, mortgage backed securities, they're getting destroyed by all the property damage. And let's just not even talk about the insurance companies that probably will not survive these calamities. Anyway, um, but yeah, but for the people of Puerto Rico, it is unbelievable that they've survived for three weeks. A lot of help is coming pouring in, but nothing's really being done as far as moving forward. And um, that's what they need to decide. What do we do? Do we move, leave the island, or do we rebuild? I'm sure they'll rebuild, uh, but they're going to need billions, if not trillions, to rebuild an entire island um, to anywhere close to what it was. And I think there's 3.5 million people there. So I, I would expect a lot of them to move to uh, the United States if they have the money, um, or to Mexico, or, or get anywhere out of Puerto Rico because it's going to be decades before it gets back to in any sense of normalcy. Um, but I think the, the power is coming on all over the island that, that's being worked on. And uh, when the power comes on, the internet access will come on and the phone access and all of a sudden you have access to your Bitcoin and your banking system. Um, so, I mean, to me, this is a, a kind of a uh, eyes wide open about you need cash. You need the thing that people recognize as money. Uh, I love coins, believe it or not. I save all my coins in jars um, because it's smaller denominations. They'll be, you know, it'll it'll be a lot cheaper to use as barter because people are going to want that cash to get other things. So uh, the coins and small denomination bills, I, I think everybody should have some stacked up at home as a percentage of your net worth um, or just to get by for two or three months. Now, if Puerto Rico wasn't getting help from the United States and around the world, it would be a completely different. If everybody was in the same boat as, so to speak, as Puerto Rico, there would be mass chaos. There would be rooting, looting and rioting and, and all other problems. So cash might not even be very helpful at all. You need guns and you need food and water and, a, and neighbors to protect yourself. It's more about protection 
and barter uh, than cash because the, you know the stores won't be open and those stores aren't open in Puerto Rico. What are you going to do with cash? Um, you can use it temporarily at you know with neighbors and things like that. But after a while, even they're going to say, "I don't want this cash. I, I need food," and they're going to try to swap their uh, cash for food. Dried food will be very valuable. So. Uh, more than three weeks since Hurricane Maria hit the island, 3.7 million American citizens are on the precipice of a humanitarian disaster. The majority of these people are desperate for food, water, electricity, and shelter. They are desperate for cash that will allow them to secure these basic necessities. But that's the thing, you know, the, the supermarkets aren't open. They can't get product. And it, it's one of those things, cash is only good for a short amount of time. Um, I, I think a lot of them will think about moving out for a while moving to the mainland, so to speak. Um, so, uh, let's see. Most of Puerto Rico has remained in the dark since Hurricane struck on September 20th. Over 84% of the island remains without power, and 37% of people are without access to water. Without power, much of the population does not have electricity, charge their phones and iPhones. Very few have Wi-Fi, and this is severely impacting their ability to communicate and conduct their lives. Inevitably, the future of Puerto Rico now lies in the wrangling hands of government and, and financial organizations, all of which seem to be pointing the finger of blame at one another. The territory's government expects to run out of cash at the end of the month. It has asked Congress for immediate payment of $6 billion to $8 billion. This is to meet vital expenses, including salaries, emergency repairs, and pension payments. Now, here's the deal. If they're going to run out of cash, where is the cash that is in circulation? Um, did the banks, is it sitting at banks? You know, once you spend your cash, then the merchant has the cash. Is the merchant redepositing that cash or are they hoarding that cash? I would assume they're hoarding that cash because the cash is more valuable than an electronic blip in a bank. Um, so I would assume it's a lot of hoarding unless the banks are criminally trying to starve these people of cash, which could be an odd possibility. I mean, cash doesn't disappear. It's like silver. It, it doesn't disappear. It just gets, you know, separated out and put into electronics in little tiny bits. Uh, cash usually doesn't disappear. It goes into a, a bank. That's where it might disappear. And I would say uh, if they're running out of cash, you might look towards the banks and say, hey, what are you doing with the cash you get in? Are people making deposits in cash into your bank, the, the retailers? I don't think they would. I think they would just hang on to it. Anyway, there's a lot to think about all this, but the the concept of having gold and silver at this time when you're in Puerto Rico is, is, is not very viable. I mean, nobody knows the value of it. Nobody thinks about that other than people who deal in the business. And obviously, Gold Core and, and Mark, they, they're in the business every day. So they, yeah, they would think, oh, this is, you know, the, the pawnbrokers are thinking this is a great time to, to get cheap gold and silver. They're probably selling their gold and silver coins for 50% of what the going market value is because people don't want gold and silver. They want the cash. And um, yeah, with Bitcoin, you can't do anything. So is it better than Bitcoin? Uh, probably in, in at least you'll get 50% on your dollar. Um, but if you move, if you get out, if you jump in a boat and get out and go somewhere else, you've got 100% of your Bitcoin still. Um, so it's really a, it's a philosophical thought. I, I don't think, I mean, having gold and silver if you're in Puerto Rico is pretty much a, a guaranteed way of selling your gold and silver for less than it's worth on the open market, uh, I believe. Because people don't buy gold and silver because... You know, we're in trouble. We got to buy gold and silver. No, they need cash. Cash is king. So, but but even if you know, are the retailers even open? That's the thing. That's the other thing. The retailers won't have any food. They don't have any water. They don't have it. Um, the whole system has shut down. So, is how long will cash be accepted? Uh, probably not very long. I think it'll go to barter. Um, and because if you're starving, uh, and you have cash. But, you know, the people who have all the food don't even want cash. They're saying, well, if I give you my food for these pieces of paper, I'm starving them. Um, it's an ugly, it's a, it's an ugly thing to think about, and it's really bad. Ultimately, my suggestion is always have a couple months worth of survival stuff, dried food, uh, water, access to water, 
definitely protection and ammunition if if the uh, the problems aren't solved looting they go crazy in looting and they'll steal all your silver um, so not a good scenario but the whole point of this uh, it gets down but you know mark is a, a salesman of gold and silver and he's a firm believer that gold and silver are money um so in the bad times he goes on to say no trash cash transactions means no transactions uh, the puerto rico problem will only get worse not only are atm and banking networks down but employers and government cannot make payments they need to make to individual accounts in the long term this is a problem likely to be faced by many nations that rely solely on electronic systems for all payments. We have previously discussed the push by governments and banks to go to a cashless society. In the UK, 87% of the total value of consumer payments are non-cash. In Canada, it's 90%. Uh, Mark Faber, a great quote from him. Basically, we're moving into an Orwellian society where they can check everything. Cash will still be one of the means where you could go somewhere and buy something and nobody would really know about it. Now they want to abolish it. I would say the same uh, about Bitcoin. You can go somewhere and, and, it's, and gold and silver as well. Uh, and yeah, it, it can be done. If, it, if that's something you want to do, it can be done. Um, disasters such as Puerto Rico do not appear to be considered by banks and governments who claim cashless societies are better for all. The cashless society push is, is just a bankster push to destroy your life and your freedoms um so but we need an alternative and gold and silver are not viable we'd have to teach seven billion people about the, the monetary history of gold and silver uh but cryptocurrencies you know, anyone who has a cell phone gets that uh, you can you can pay with a with a with an electronic blip on your phone um moving on and then he, the only problem with this article is he, he does go to um, the point where it's like, uh, and here, here's a solution. If Puerto Rico were an independent nation, then it would almost certainly be experienced a fall in the currency. At this point, all the goods and services it needed to import in order to help it to recover would be increasingly expensive, as seen in the UK after Brexit. True, but they could also print their own cash and give out cash to people uh, instead of having to go to the U.S. government. Meanwhile, gold and silver would be accepted as they are borderless currencies that do not operate within the confines of government, central bank, or electronic system. That is wrong. They, they are not accepted by everyone. Not at all. I, I Look at the uh, what's it, Mark Dice videos when he tries to give away silver coins to people on the street and they don't even want it. Um, nobody, I would say less than 1% of 1% knows uh, or understands in their heart the, the concept of gold and silver as money these days. It has been, uh, it has not been used as, as money for so long. People have never even seen a silver coin. They're not going to accept a silver coin. It is not, it's universally acceptable among the, the people who deal in it, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the population. Um, so I, I disagree that it is universally acceptable, acceptable as a currency. Uh, gold and silver often get a bad rap when it comes to discussions about their role as money. Both are pushed to the bottom of the pile when you consider the convenience of spending them compared to the likes of electronic cash, paper notes, and Bitcoin. But one thing that is guaranteed with them is that you know you can use them in times of crisis. You cannot use gold and silver in times of crisis. That's the worst time to have it. They are highly durable and highly desired. Highly durable, yes. Not highly desired. They're highly desired by this many people. Uh, that is not the case with fiat or Bitcoin when it comes to the crunch as seen in Puerto Rico in recent days. It, we can say it over and over again. Then the, the fact that some people have uh, gold and silver coins that they're going to their coin shop and the coin shop's giving them 50% cash on the dollar is... Uh, you know, if the coin shop even has any money, barter. I would, I would much, much rather have something other than, than silver and gold. I'd, I'd, ha I'd rather have the same amount in food, in dried food, in, the, in these times of crisis, uh, because you'll get a lot more bang for your buck with the dried food than it'll save your life than the gold and the silver. Uh, let's see. No matter the town, city, or country you find yourself in, times as these pose multiple threats, whether military or natural. 
We all assume governments are competent and will look after us. We cannot bring ourselves to imagine electricity systems in our banking system, including ATMs going down and not having access to our hard-earned savings. Absolutely correct. But it happens all too many times as the last hurricane season has demonstrated. Prudent savers like who like to be prepared and should consider the magnitude of disasters such as Hurricane Maria, food runs out and electricity goes down. Do you think you are wealthy and then all of a sudden you have nothing? You need cash and a means of exchange to in order to survive. Diversity, diversifying your emergency funds should be a priority. This means hold some cash, gold and silver coins, and bars to ensure you can survive and thrive without the government's help. Again, gold and silver coins and bars are, I would say, you'll, you'll have to sell them for half their value if um, it comes down to you having to sell them in a time of disaster. Uh, hope, best to hope for the best, but be prepared for less benign scenarios. People of Puerto Rico would attest to the power of this today. Uh, I, I would I would disagree that gold and silver are, are beneficial. You're going to have to, yes, you can sell them to a pawnbroker, but you can't, no one's going to want to barter with gold and silver coins as you walk down the street in your little local town in Puerto Rico. They really don't care that you have gold and silver, but just, you can't get rid of it today. And, you know, watch the Mark Dice videos of him trying to give away a silver coin and, and nobody knows anything about it. Uh, it is the bankers have done their job and drilled it out of the minds of humanity that gold and silver are money. It's only the people like the banksters and the gold bugs and the, maybe the pawnbrokers or gold and silver dealers who will value it at all. Um, but they only value it because they think they can sell it for more at a later date. Um, anyway, but having said all that, uh, Mark Byrne is a great guy, very smart guy. Gold Core is a good company. And I'm all supportive of him and his uh, battle against the banksters. So everybody go to Gold Core, contact him, sign up and open an account and, and buy some silver because I think you need some silver. Having said all that, you don't need silver as a an emergency means of exchange. This is Big Swear. I will be doing a few videos today because I want to talk about my friend Jay Snip 4 who YouTube's trying to cut off. And I'm going to do a, a whole video on that. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.